That is the Ferrari 360 Challenge for Dali. It has always been my goal in life for as long as I can remember to own one of these cars. Today I'm going to have my first ever experience of driving one. I'm literally in my pyjamas looking like a homeless person on the street. This car is one and truly the one. Oh, I love that car. Oh my god. If I didn't want one already. I mean, I did want one already. What do I, I mean, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> that is why the challenge to Dali will always win. <laughs> I've got to be honest, it does not feel real that that is my car. My Challenge Stradale. Saying those words out loud, it feels like a bit of a joke. I have dreamed of owning one of these cars ever since it came out in 2003, and then more obsessively dreamed about owning one for the last eight or nine years. I've got to let you in on a bit of a secret. I've actually owned this car for a few weeks now, but there's been a lot going on in my life. I just wanted to take some time to kind of let the moment sink in before I then turn on all my cameras and documented it for you guys. But it, ha it hasn't sunk in. Every time I walk up to this car, every time I get out of it, I'm like, oh my God, it's a Challenge Stradale. And I'm like, oh no, wait, it's my Challenge Stradale. Feels like someone's just loaned it to me to make a quick video. But I guess with time, it will start to feel more real. And I'll realize that I can do whatever I want, go wherever I want with this car. And a huge monumental dream has been achieved. But yeah, I still kind of feel like a, a supercar spotter who's just stumbled across one in, in, a, in a muddy car park. It's so freaking cool. So let me show you around my challenge to Dali. Uh, this is a 2004 car, which I think makes it kind of mid production cycle. I believe they made challenge Dali's from 2003 to 2005. They made around 1250 units worldwide, but it wasn't a numbered production run. So there, there's no official total number of cars produced, but most people agree it's around 1250 units. Um, as you may have noticed, this is a right hand drive example. This car was delivered new to the UK. More on that a little bit later. But it's in kind of launch specification. In my mind, this is an iconic looking Challenge Stradale. And by that, I mean it's red with a stripe and it even has the sort of the Challenge Stradale interior. I'll show you that when we, when we open up the inside. Uh, but more importantly for me, it's the right red. This is Rosso Scuderia, which maybe people have become a bit more familiar with in recent years, but it actually launched with this car, Rosso Scuderia came into life with the Challenge Stradale and it was stolen from the Ferrari Formula One team. I believe in the early 90s as, as F1 popularity grew and therefore F1 TV viewing figures grew, uh, Ferrari were back in Maranello watching F1 on TV going, oh, cars don't look red, they look like kind of 
brown or maroon, we've got to brighten them up. And, and so they did. And then in the early 2000s, when they made this car, they decided to take the colour from the Formula One team and put it on. They're kind of, well, their first proper race car for the road. There were a few variants before it, but, but this, is the, this is where it all started. The, you know, the Speciale, the Scuderia, the Pista, it began here. And so they wanted to take, I guess, the Formula One colour. It is a super bright red. Uh, it's actually quite hard to film. Sometimes it looks a bit orange, um, but it really, really pops. And it's so much brighter than the more kind of traditional Rosso Corsa, which I had, for example, on my 360 Modena. Um, yeah, it's a Larry colour, but because, well, of all the reasons I've wanted one of these cars for so long, that colour, well, okay, we'll come back to that. Let me show you the inside, because I mentioned it has the Challenge Sadali interior. And if you haven't seen this before, Bada bing, bada boom, red and black Alcantara. So yes, I've got a, I've got a red car with a red interior, punchy, right? Um, you can see here just the difference between a sort of more traditional red and then Rosso Scuderia. It does really look orange here, but it's not orange. It is a very bright red. Um, but not a lot else to talk about when it comes to the interior of a Challenge Stradale because it is stripped out and lightweight. This car did get the factory fitted stereo, which has been sort of replaced and upgraded since, but I think about 15 years ago, because that's an awful system that's got to go. I never thought I'd want a stereo in a Challenge Stradale because it just so, it sounds so damn good, but I do do a lot of miles in my cars. I'm going to take this thing on many adventures, so it would be nice to be able to listen to some music and some podcasts and stuff. So I think I'll just up upgrade that at some point. Um, loads of carbon fiber. There is a Challenge Stradale plaque. Uh, it just doesn't number the car. And then, of course, you've got the uh, Ferrari Formula One constructor's badge as well, which all of the cars of this era got because of Ferrari's success in Formula One. Um, we've got the harnesses. There's no traditional seatbelts in this car. You could option traditional seatbelts. And I think, interestingly, these are the medium racing seats, where in my 360 Modena, I had large, so they're a little bit of a, a tighter fit. Um, you've got the roll cage and the headlining. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there were a ton of things you could option for these cars when you were ordering one. Um, but if you were to go out and Google 360 Challenge Stradale, this might be one of the first images you get because it well and truly is just that, an iconically specced 360 CS, which is mine. thought I wanted a launch spec challenge for Dali. I've obsessed over these things for so long and been lucky enough to drive quite a few of them or at least see various different specifications all around the world. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what I thought I wanted, but I was always like, oh yeah, I'll probably get something a little bit more interesting than a launch spec car. But the story of how I ended up with this particular CS, I mean, it almost deserves a video of its own but we're gonna come on to it in a moment. Long story short though, I am so glad that this is the car I ended up buying. Because, you know, over the years, so many people have asked, why do I want a Challenge Stradale so badly? I obviously previously owned a 360 Modena, I spent six years kind of perfecting it into potentially the best 360 Modena in the world. Surely that was pretty much the same experience as a Challenge Stradale. But, but no, these things are a different breed. But over and above that, this car has always been my poster car. And for many reasons. When I was growing up, I was obsessed with Michael Schumacher. I, I still kind of am, heck, I'm even wearing his watch today. But in the early 2000s, I pretty much only wore red like the Ferrari Formula One team. I watched every single session of Formula One that I possibly could. I lived and breathed Ferrari and Schumacher. And this car came out in 2003 in peak Ferrari and Schumacher era. And I remember seeing it and being like, oh my God, I need it. I want it. It had F1 flappy paddles, just like the Formula One car. It sounded like a Formula One car. It had the paint from the Formula One car. So many different things that made me go, yes, please. And I had a post of this car on my wall for good five or six years just always lusted after it. And, and on that poster was a car in this specification, the launch specification. So the fact that I'm sitting here now owning 
essentially the car that I stared at for all those years feels well and truly special and I think I was just kidding myself when I kept banging on about oh no, no, I, think, well, I, might, I might go blue or, I I'm not that fast about a stripe I mean at the end of the day I would have taken one of these cars in neon pink I wouldn't have cared I remember years ago, Chris Harris giving me a hard time being like, the 430 Scuderia is a much better car. Why not get one of those? Because this is the one I want. This is the dream car for so many people. It's, it's a Countach or a Mura or 250 GTO. It doesn't matter. For me, this has always been the holy grail, the unicorn. And I can admit it's flawed. You know, this is very early flappy paddle gearbox technology, but for me, it's a part of the car, it's tied to it, it's character, it's personality. It makes me feel like a Formula One driver. And dynamically, yes, it's still a 360 from the early 2000s. Is it gonna set a Nürburgring lap record? No, but I couldn't care less. And 400 odd horsepower isn't that much these days. Most hot hatches have more. But it's about the way this car makes me feel, the, the way it transports me to a different time. The fact that it is a dream, realized and the Modena was an insanely special thing that I got to do some incredible adventures with but it will never hold a light up to a challenge to Dali. Those of you that have said what's the point what's the difference is well there are so many and you notice it the minute you get in this car like all of Ferrari's stripped out lightweight specials the interior is just insane I can see the welding the rivet the bolts I mean it's it's kind of ugly but amazing there's a specialness to it there's actually a bit of a sketchiness to it I'm a tiny bit scared of this car <laughs> I mean, it is atrocious weather conditions today. It's mucky, it's wet, it's cold, it's about five degrees. And this thing is a handful. And I never thought my Modena was a handful. There's an edginess to this thing. It is a race car for the road. The 360 Challenge Stradale road version. And you could say that over the years, Ferrari have taken their road cars and moved them closer to their race cars, except maybe the Pista. But this thing was was, was a 360 challenge, which they basically made road legal and then said, yeah, off you go, buy it. It's wild. And therefore, yeah, not just from the visual, the lightweight, the increase in power, all of these things which on paper make this thing different. And oh my God, there's a flood. How does a challenge that I do through water? Buy a supercar in winter, Sam. What a brilliant idea. Buy a 20-year-old supercar in winter, Sam. What a brilliant idea. Oh my God, I'm having to be so cautious on that throttle pedal. The rear tires on this thing, I think they need to be looked at. They are, they are not grippy, but they're fun. So yes, as I say, I don't feel like I need to explain myself anymore as to why I bought this thing. If you're still sitting there being like, oh, well, I should have bought a 458 Italia. You're on the wrong channel, mate. You're on the wrong channel. So I guess let's move on and talk about how I ended up with this particular car. Now it's a bit of a long-winded story, so bear with me here. If you've been watching my kind of recent videos, you'll know that I declared I was gonna go out and buy one of these cars, but I was a little bit screwed because, well, I couldn't really afford one. <laughs> Whilst I realized it was finally time to, to pull the trigger and, and buy my dream car, I didn't quite know how it was going to happen. Here in the UK, right-hand drive Challenge Radales tend to be advertised for 200, 250,000 pounds. In Europe, they tend to be closer to 300,000 pounds. Same in America, in Dubai. I don't really have that kind of money. So I kind of worked out that the most realistic option was gonna be a left-hand drive example, but here in the UK, because they tend to appear on the market for around 150,000 pounds. And actually, at the end of 2022, when I first started umming and ahhing about my Modena, spoke to Magnitude Finance and I got a quote on a left-hand drive car that was up for sale at around 150 grand. And I knew if I kind of begged, steal and borrowed, I could just about afford to finance 
a left-hand drive car at that money. But then as time went on and I kept going back and forth as to whether I'd sell my modern and whether it was time to pull the trigger, well, all the cars disappeared from the market. Left-hand drive examples seemed to go back to Europe and just not be advertised. And right-hand drive examples, well, they very rarely came up for sale. And if they did, they were at that super high price of 200, 250 odd thousand pounds. So I was like, huh, what do I do now? Well, that's where collecting cars and auctions comes in. Uh, on the podcast was in the last year, I spoke about the fact that I was spending a lot of time on collecting cars, browsing listings, and kind of getting carried away with the idea of buying things like a, an FF or, or, or a Roma. Thank God I didn't, because after a few failed attempts to purchase some Ferraris, this thing got advertised. Now, my initial thoughts were, cool, but like I am never going to be in the price bracket for that. A right-hand drive Stradale coming to the market when not many are available. It's going to be an auction. People are going to go nuts for it. But I was feeling a bit punchy. I'd been bidding away on other cars and I knew that I could afford a Chan Stradale at circa 150 grand. So I just put in a very early maximum bid of 150 and didn't really think about it. And then with about six hours to go, I logged in and I was the highest bidder. I was like, what is going on here? started to freak out, kept watching the clock go down, kept seeing my name at the top of the list, got to 30 minutes ago. Again, I was still the highest bidder. There was a little bit of chaos in the last five minutes, but I ended up winning this car for £154,000. Now, it's hard to know in this current market, but I would say that's 30 or 40 grand under current market values. It's a steal. <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I bought a Chan Shradali. I bought it. I need to call Magnitude Finance. <laughs> Thank God it all came together. The numbers hadn't changed all that much, even though interest rates had gone through the roof. And yeah, everything was in place for me to buy this car. Now, I do actually think there are a number of reasons why this particular car kind of went a little bit under the radar. It's not just the fact that the UK used car market is currently dead in the water think for some people there are a few red flags with this example. Uh, firstly, it's a bit of a, a leggy car, 35,000 odd miles on the clock. That doesn't scare me. You know, I like to use my cars for adventures. I'm going to be adding to that very shortly. But Challenge for Dali's are collector cars these days and most people want super low mileage examples. But I think the, the sort of slightly more concerning fact is that whilst it's done 35,000 miles, it hasn't done any of those recently because this car has barely moved since 2015. The previous owner got it to add to a collection. He was planning to use it more than he did but yeah it just, it just sat tucked away in a corner somewhere and and barely touched. Now I know having previously owned a 360 Modena and spent a lot of time around modern classics while you're not driving a car from this era it's, it's not good news usually. But I looked through all the paperwork. I saw that in 2015, when this car was purchased by the last owner, some money was spent on sort of tidying it up before it got locked away. And then a couple of years ago, it was kind of recommissioned at a main Ferrari dealer and a lot of money was spent on some big ticket items. And so I thought, well, how bad can it be? <laughs> I guess we'll find out because next week I'm going to be taking it down to AV Engineering, the legends who meticulously maintain my 360 Modena. They'll be giving it a full inspection. You'll probably be thinking, well, you should have got the inspection done before you won the auction, but I didn't know I was going to win the auction. <laughs> so we're going to be finding out, you know, after the fact, but it will be fine in the grand scheme of things, I hope. And you know, based on my initial impressions over the last few weeks, the car is great. It's going to need a little bit finessing. It's going to need to be massaged and, and brought back to its best state. But I've been out here enjoying it. I had one engine light, one engine light, and it disappeared. And since then, it's been fine, apart from those sketchy rear tyres. Like, ah, oh, it's still a Stradale, and so I just spend time working on it. And I think what might have been red flags for others were just missed opportunities. And you're fools out there if you're sitting there going, oh no, there's too many miles and not enough work. Because I've ended up with this incredible car! <laughs> well, that's it, boys and girls. My challenge to Dali. Pure silliness to start the year. I'm going to do that cliched YouTuber thing and say none of this would be possible without all of you. 
but it's true of course there's the support that you give this channel and the podcast but there's also the fact that so many of you have trolled me to buy one of these cars for so long every time one gets posted on instagram for sale there are a thousand comments going at seen through glass so many of you have emailed me linked to cars for sale and i've met you at live podcast events or just out and about you're like come on when are you getting a stradale you have genuinely been my motivation and at the end of last year with everything going on in my life i was like now is the time and here we are in my cs it is so special it's so frustrating that the weather's so bad i seem to make a habit out of buying sports cars supercars at this time of year and you just you really can't enjoy them it is horrible out here today so many of the roads are flooded there's mud and grime and i've nearly crashed about six times off camera <laughs> so i cannot wait for some proper dry weather and big big adventures ahead where i can just start to figure this car out i've got to learn it all over again but yeah it is the start it is the start of a story like i said it, it needs some finessing anyway so we'll take advantage of the bad weather just to get it into a good place and get ready for yeah everything that we're going to be doing with <laughs> this car oh, so look subscribe now stay tuned but most of all give yourselves a pat on the back because we got here together we got this car together and i promise i'll make it worth the wait because it's been a wait but now we're here the way this thing vibrates the sensations everything it's so different to my previous car and as good if not potentially better than i was ever hoping let's do that one more time please don't crash sam